Hello and welcome to the Tau update for June. And without further ado, let's get into the dev team. So I'll pass it over to Karim for his summary of the month. Cheers. Thank you, Fola, and welcome everyone to the June update for the Tau development team. Tomash has been working both on the Tau parser and the TML. On the Tau parser side, he's got a good start on the uh, parser documentation. And uh, he's also working on some tutorials for the parser of varying uh, degrees of difficulty. He's also developed a parser generation tool that given a grammar will generate a complete C++ program that is human readable that you can just compile and have a parser for your grammar. So that will be a very useful tool. On the TML side, he fixed a bug that has to do with the bit size issue when unnesting transformations. David has been working exclusively on Tau this month. In particular, he changed the underlying data structures for the parser where he has duplicated the data structures into a form that is more amenable to a uh, rewriting process, which is uh, central to Tau. He's also improved uh, the Tau grammar in many ways, as we'll see, and uh, he's uh, been discussing it with Ohad and they've been finalizing Tau grammar, so they're close to doing that. He's uh, introduced some APIs for rewriting parse trees. Yeah, he's simplified some of those APIs. He's also uh, added some built-in functions uh, to the Tau language, uh, which will speed up the execution, but also allow the users to um, uh, bring in their own functionality, essentially. So that's going to be a work in progress with the built-in functions in Tau. Umar has continued his work on the parser, where he um, optimized the memory usage uh, for the parser to decrease uh, the memory usage, where he removed duplication of storage of early items. And uh, he's been testing this optimization, but uh, unfortunately, he's uh, run into a bug in uh, some cases and still trying to figure that out. Um, he's also helped the marketing team with framing Tau position and uh, differentiation. Andre is still working on the Tau Live. He's improved uh, the search accuracy and speed. He's also optimized uh, the user cards uh, for a more intuitive experience on mobile platforms. He's also had done some integrations between Tau Live and, uh, and the Tau uh, chain to improve uh, uh, transactions between the two in the near future. But uh, last but not least, he's uh, started on a fun project uh, that has to do with creating a chat GPT plugin using TML, but the goal is to use be able to use Tau when that is available eventually. So that's a very um, interesting uh, project that, um, that I'm cu very curious to uh, see where that goes. So um, yeah, thank you, uh, Fola. That's it for uh, the June uh, update. I'll uh, hand it back to you. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Karim. I'll pass it over to Andre for his updates and his digital to chat GPT. Cheers. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, uh, of course, I uh, dedicated some time this month uh, on uh, polishing uh, Tau Live uh, and fixing those uh, small uh, bugs that I found. I improved um, the search, I improved uh, mobile applications view with uh, user cards and uh, some cryptocurrency related integrations as well. And uh, I developed a chat GPT plugin that will connect chat gpt to tau and uh, it will help us to to reach a user base and uh, to connect uh, to worlds of uh, ai and logic AI in the future probably but it's the thing to try let me show you how it works uh, let me show you how it works in reality for now because of course it's it's just a test for now uh, so uh, here we have our chat GPT uh, window. We choose um, we choose to enable our plugin and that uh, connects chat GPT with Tau. And let's try to post uh, some natural language text to it and see how it works with it. Uh, let's take this. Uh, we need to tell 
chat GPT what to do exactly. Um, we convert it to logic and run with how and see how it works. As you see, it uh, converts our natural language text uh, into um, into formal logic formula and sends for a processing for the result. Of course, it now returns true, but later it will return much, much more. Uh, also, it can convert uh, even more complex text. Actually, it, uh, because it sees, uh, uh, because it sees um, the context, uh, it, it's easy for ChatGPT to convert more or less correctly any kind of text. Um, we will see it live with now. No, no, endless possibilities actually if it will fly. But of course, uh, first hand we need to see how, uh, what, what stars we can reach with some, this approach. We see chat GPT converts our natural language text into a logic formula right away and stands for us to processing and we can connect and this logic to anything and you start to return any any answer with uh, true logic i oh that's basically it thank you very much looking forward for our next goals all right fantastic thank you so much andre and i'll pass it over to david for his update on what's going on at tau Cheers. Thank you, Paula. Hi, everyone. As Karim said, uh, this month I've been working in Tao language, in, and in particular, I have changed the underlying data structures for the rewriting process to improve performance and memory use. At first, I have been using the data structure provided by the early parser to simplify the specking out of the APIs, but uh, uh, those data structures include some extra information uh, meaningful for the parser process, process, but not for the rewriting process. So I have created new data structures to reduce the memory use uh, by just simplifying uh, what what we what we store. And also I have uh, used the same techniques that I that we use in the BDDs in order to reduce uh, the overall memory consumption. Apart from that, I've been improving the Tau grammar and I reviewed it by with with Ohat and now it's close to a final four. The current grammar is oriented to the use that we will do uh, during the rewriting process. I have also uh, been improving the API for the rewriting of parse trees and also simplifying and clarifying the API for tau, tau programs. Initially, the rewriting API, as commented before, was tied to the uh, underlying data structures that we got from the early parser. Now, it depends on the new data structures and have differentiated the traversal operations and also the visiting operations to simplify the overall API and the use of the library. Apart from that, I have also been improving parts of the grammar uh, of the Tao language itself and the Tao program API to add uh, the possibility to inject uh, constants from uh, Boolean algebras given by the end user. The end user could use external libraries to speed up the execution of the computation related to Boolean algebras. This is more or less a work in progress and, and I expect that it will be finished soon. And that's all for my monthly update. Thank you. All right. Fantastic, David. Thank you so much. So much going on this month for Tao. Um, so I'll pass it over to Tomash for his update on what's going on with the parser and much more. Cheers. 
Thank you, Fola. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this month, uh, I've worked mostly on the parser library. I've enhanced the parser gen tool to include uh, original grammar rules as comments in the generated C++ parser code, which uh, makes it more readable by human. I've worked uh, on parser's documentation, describing uh, all its types, functions, classes, and their methods. As a part of documentation, I've started creating a parser tutori tutorial uh, which will show how to implement parsing of CSV files step by step. And uh, regarding TML, uh, I fixed a bit size issue when doing uh, unnesting transformations of TML. I've uh, resolved it by using a different structure for storing states of a TML database. And uh, I also did a lot of reformatting and cleaning of uh, our code base. That, that's all from me this month. All right, fantastic. Thanks so much, Tamash. All right, I'll pass it over to, to Umar for his update next. Yes, over to you. Hi, team. Um, so this month uh, of uh, June, uh, basically we try to improve the storage of early items uh, within the early parser. Mainly they are stored in the S container, over which we do also do uh, garbage collection. But then we also store um, early items for faster retrieval in supporting data structures. So they are now duplicate storage places and the idea was to how to remove these redundant storages without uh, impacting the garbage collection and forest generation so initial experiment uh, showed that we could remove those duplicate storage but uh, further testing revealed that they it, it they have impact on the uh, on the garbage collection and uh, and forest generation so um so one approach had been to uh, reduce the percentage of the early items that could be garbage collected. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that, that, that's, uh, um, that has been uh, going on and uh, that required a, a lot of debugging and testing and doing several revisions of the changes. It's still a work in progress. Um, in parallel, I also uh, help marketing team with framing DAO's position and creating some differentiation for the offering that we have in comparison with other approaches. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Umar. And last but not least, I'll pass it over to Ahad for his update to wrap up the month. Cheers. I continued with uh, uh, Professor Falcon and Professor Paris to find um, ways to support the two variable fragment which is required for, uh, as I explained before, which is required for good uh, knowledge of presentation language because Professor Falcone explained to me there are no uh, good up-to-date implementation <coughs> of knowledge of expressive knowledge representation languages. We, we try to come up with one and uh, we made a really good progress uh, this month. A lot of uh, new stuff, uh, very useful stuff, but uh, there is some uh, way to go. All right, thank you so much, Ahad, to wrap up the month. Thank you to you all for tuning in. And we will see you in Telegram. Don't forget to like the video. And uh, yeah, stay with us. Cheers. <laughs>